who doesn't love happy ending? And today is that day with our fairy tale pumpkin painting. Hi, my name is Wheat. If we haven't met yet, I've been an oil painter and teacher for about 28 years. I've learned a lot of common sense things that help a strong, realistic oil painting. And so today with our pumpkin, we're going to take a part of the canvas that has almost got no paint on it, which is where our pumpkin lives. And we're gonna end up with a beautiful three-dimensional, fully modeled pumpkin. I'm gonna show you how to take your pumpkin and make it, keep it from looking like you cut it out and pasted it onto the canvas and show you how to make it look like it's a solid object that you can reach your hands around that actually goes behind past where the eye can see. So if that sounds good, grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, settle in, and we will make this most magical painting complete. just continue with this process as we go we start with the lighter color on top and then we start adding the body color and then the body shadow and then we'll have the reflection we'll save the highlights for last the, the brightest spots on top but yeah you just treat each rib as a separate piece to me I think it works better that way if I just painted this whole thing I might lose my way a little quicker which is easy to do so so I'm just going to continue on with this and just hang with me and uh, yeah, we'll get the rest of this blank canvas covered. So as I'm starting this rib of the pumpkin, I'm starting with the light part and that is cadmium oxide, I'm sorry, cadmium yellow deep. And then I'm adding a little transparent oxide red. I'm trying to keep it from being too yellowy and the transparent oxide red makes it a little more orangey. And so I'm adding a little white because that part's pretty light. We'll come back and add another highlight before we're done. But then I'm going to add, we're going to start the color as it rolls into shadow. This rolls into shadow pretty quickly because the light was from up and behind the pumpkin. So to get that richness of the color that we want as it rolls into shadow, I'm using less white and I'm using transparent oxide red with some cadmium yellow deep. <clears throat> And I'm just cutting it in right beside next to the light color. And then I'm using a cross hatching a zigzag um, technique to blend the two. So as we work our way down the rest of the rib, I'm going to, you can see if we just use the transparent oxide red, it would be too hot, too orange, too loud. So the way we subdue that is we grab its complementary color which even though transparent oxide red is pretty dark, it's in the orange family. So we want a color opposite orange on the color wheel, which is blue. So we're gonna throw in some ultramarine blue to quiet that transparent oxide red. It will knock down the vibrancy, it will subdue it, and it will darken it. And we want all of those things as we roll into shadow. And that's a pretty dark color, so I'm gonna throw in a little of the cadmium yellow deep just to, because it's very light and it's so it's rather opaque. So that will lift the color a little bit as far as the tonality, keep it from being too dark. So we're going to do this process on each rib as we go, making sure that the seams in between get a little extra um, of the very dark ultramarine with the transparent oxide red to show separation. And then we will pay some attention to the reflected part of the rib. edges because it's not glass <laughs> um, a really light highlight would be um, very shiny very hard highlight like if you had a piece of glass so we want to make sure this is bright but not glass like this is not something made by a glass blower so 
it's very helpful as you're working to step away, get up, walk around, take a look because you get so you get your nose in it so far that you can't really see the effect you're creating. Your brain is just busy covering the canvas and you, your brain is having a hard time seeing the illusion you're creating. So getting away from it, if you're in a class, walk around, look at your classmates work and come back and very often you'll be surprised by the illusion you see. So let's start, uh, let's go ahead and put that stem in and see what we got. We'll have to sneak it in behind these parts that are in front and then we'll have to do a little repair to the ones in front. So, and so let's just ignore this right now. Like I said, we want to just let the illusion happen. So I think we'll do the stem and then we'll do the body, the cast shadow on the table and then we'll tinker. This needs some tinkering. I'm just not sure what, so I don't just want to start stabbing at it and brushing at it because I, as a whole, I like it and I don't want to lose that. So I want to think about other things for a little bit and then revisit it. Okay, so for the stem, we're going to use some, we're going to use a green, a very dark green. We're going to use yellow ochre and dark ultramarine blue. That will give us a nice dark green and a dull green. We don't want a real verdant green. Yellow ochre and ultramarine blue. Got this really dark color here. I think that will probably work. Let's sketch it in with that and then see how it looks with what we have and then we can modify it. So I want the stem to look rather woody. Want a lot of blue in this because it's gonna mix with the orange and it'll cancel itself out. It's a little too much blue. But the stem doesn't just come in like a stick, like an apple stem. It kind of spreads at the base. So we're going to bring it out over here. And we don't want it smooth. It's quite woody. You know, when you grab the stem of a pumpkin, it's pokey. It's rough. It's faceted. And when you cut it, it actually looks like a star. So we're going to think about those shapes as we go. And even this stem will get a hi highlight. <laughs> even though it's very rough, it won't be a shiny highlight, but it will be where the light is striking. So this is our opportunity to explain what this shape is here. So I need a little more turp because it's not flowing very well. So I love to use the stem. See how these look like they're welded together? I'm gonna to use the stem color to slip in between the sections. Get a little more structure over here. Oh, I like that. Okay, so I think I'm going to, it's awfully rigid um, compared to the pumpkin, so I'm going to come in from over here and just soften it a little bit. Come in from this side, soften this a little bit. And then I'm just going to go up. We just don't want it to be stealing the show. And now we've got raggy edges from the stem. So I'm going to come in with the light. I washed my brush and I'm coming in with the light pumpkin color. I'm just going to smooth those away. Because this part's in front of the stem. So we want it to look like it. All right, so let's go for the cast shadow at the bottom. It's going to be really quite dark. Similar to the background, but a little more blue. The darkest part will be the part right under the bottom of the pumpkin. And then as it falls away, it lightens up. So yeah, as we're painting this cast shadow, we want to keep in mind 
that. The darkest portion of it will be at the base, right underneath the bottom of the subject. And then as it falls away, it will um, lessen in strength by degrees. Like you could think of it in terms of it's 100% dark under the pumpkin and then it's 90%, 80% and so on. Not that we will technically try to achieve that, but just more of a, a theory that we're working off of that will help guide us to a realistic looking cast shadow. And the cast shadow will always be playing off the colors of the table it is sitting on. Now we don't paint our cast shadows blue because our pumpkin is orange. We are painting this cast shadow bluish purplish because the table is orangish yellowish. So that's something you want to keep in mind about cast shadows. Okay, so let's see how we get it to look more finished. I'm going to soften the cast shadow. Of course, I'm rinsing out my brush and I'm going to soften. So I'm going to bring the background into it. Not the background, but the floor. Uh, tablecloth. We don't want the edges of the shadow to be as harsh as the edges of the pumpkin. And since the paint's kind of drying, I can get with it a little more heavily. Maybe I'm going to cross hatch it a little bit. And I think this also makes it look more like the like it's sitting down on the table. We're removing some paint as we go. And since it was a less light, it's very a diffuse shadow. It's not as strong of a shadow as if it were um, a spotlight like this light here. So now I'm going to pull the shadow up into the bottom of the pumpkin and it will make it roll under, give it that turning edge. And every time I make a pass, I wipe my brush off. Now I'm gonna go back and forth a little bit. Okay. So our building's going okay. Um, I want to make these edges. I'm going to use my small square brush. Got it wet. I'm going to use some of this darker color to make it turn under. It's still a little bit jarring to me, the transition. So I'm going to make it a little more. Yeah, I like that better. Let it be soft and blend with what's there, but we can reiterate it a little bit. A little more um, shadow coming up from here. Yeah, I like that better. Now I'll get the darker orange color and just kind of soften that down. This is just too light, so I'm going to make it a little darker to help it turn under. So it was looking 
too dark before we put the cast shadow and now it's looking too light to me so I'm adding some more darks in here. And as we ease it in we're gonna we're spreading it out a little bit and it's continuing to lighten the light side. helping I'm getting some pure white. I'm going to revisit this guy up here. So I float my brush and then I scoop up a little bit on the edge when I'm having a spot that's hard to get the paint to stick. It's like a little star. Seems like a silly detail, but I think it makes a difference. Looks like a cut. I'm like trying to make it look like a cut in anyway. I think I'm going to soften it by just coming across. We got a lot of brush strokes, and I think it can withstand a little bit of softening. remove paint by just using a dry brush. Let's try that. Yeah, I like it. It's turning that edge under, but it's also brightening it a little bit. Yeah, I really think that's working. Let's get a couple of spots a little brighter than the others just for variety. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna, this edge is still a little too distinct, so I'm using my dry blender brush to kind of scrub at it a little bit to make it a little more soft. Same here. It's just because the paint was a little dry. And I'm going to come in here with my large flat brush and just white and brighten the table. That's something I always do at the end. This makes the light look a little more like it's hitting the table. It helps the table look a little more delineated and we can also use this white to just tidy up this cast shadow a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to do the little seeds. They're just pumpkin seeds and they're yellow ochre. might need my littlest brush here in a second. Got one here. Moving kind of sideways. And even these guys get a cast shadow, a highlight. <laughs> and uh, I think I need my smallest brush. 
sometimes brushes get older, they get splayed, and it's hard to get a point. So, just a little more ochre. I want it to look different than the color of the pumpkin. So here's a little seed, a little oval. All right, we'll put one in the shadow. Those look like they're in a row. We can't have that. Just paint him out. Drop him down a little bit. There, that's better. So I'm getting a little of the violet color I used for under the pumpkin. And it's like eyeliner. We're just going to put a cast shadow underneath each one of these. My neighbor dogs must be home. I hear them barking, making bear bark. All right. So I'm going to wipe out my brush and then gent gently soften this edge here of the cast shadow. Okay, so then, believe it or not, everything gets a highlight, right? Even these little seeds will get a highlight. And it's, to me, surprising how, what a difference it makes. It makes them look more realistic. And we want to make them look a little varied. We don't want to put the dot in the very same place on each one. So this is the light side of the seed. And then it's rolling into shadow. This one doesn't get much of a highlight because it is in the shadow. But we'll lighten that side a little bit. A little too light. Just dumb it down. Well, I hope you enjoyed this seasonal subject. I love pumpkins. I love pumpkin season. And uh, yeah, come back next time. Who knows what we'll get up to. Thank you. Bye. Se você disse que eu te safino Sabe que isto em mim provoca em mim